As you enter the job market, one of the first concepts you learn about is earning overtime. Depending on where you live, federal, state, or local legislation has a major impact on why you are paid the way you are regarding overtime. Overtime eligibility is driven by whether a job is exempt from overtime as determined by the Fair Labor Standards Act. Simply put, jobs that are deemed to pass one or more of the FLSA tests may be classified as exempt and does not have to be paid overtime. Jobs that do not pass any of the FLSA tests are not eligible to avoid being paid overtime. Or rather, they are non-exempt. But how does a job get deemed as exempt or non-exempt from overtime? Let's take a look at the Fair Labor Standards Act. Hi all, Greg here from Streamline HR Solutions. In this video, we're going to dig into the Department of Labor's FLSA, or Fair Labor Standards Act, and the criteria for determining if a job is required to be paid overtime or non-exempt, or if the job qualifies for not having to pay overtime or exempt. Restated, if I work more hours than the federal, state, or other government specified hourly quantities, and my employer does not identify my job as exempt from overtime, based on the FLSA test, then I must be paid overtime. So what are these tests? Let's take a look. Now a quick disclaimer, I am not a lawyer and this is not intended as legal advice. This is merely for introduction of a concept. For further clarification to make actual exemption decisions, I recommend you speak with your corporate legal counsel. With that out of the way, companies engaged in interstate commerce and meet some minimal size standards are required to pay their employees overtime unless it can be proven that a role passes one of these exemption tests. So what are these tests? Let's take a look at the DOL.gov guidelines for these tests. There are five primary categories, the computer test, the executive test, the professional test, with this one having creative and learned professional subcategories, the administrative test, and the outside sales test. Most of these tests have a minimum required wage, along with two to three additional criteria. So let's take a look at each of these tests. The computer employee exemption at the time of making this video requires salary of $684 per week, which is $17.10 per hour, or $35,568 annually. However, this person, if compensated on an hourly basis, then they must be paid at a rate of not less than $27.63 which is $57,470.40 annually. Now, in this situation, the employee must be employed as a computer systems analyst, computer programmer, software engineer, or similarly skilled worker in a computer field. The employee's primary duty must consist of one of the following four areas. Application of systems analysis techniques and procedures, design, development, documentation, analysis, creation, testing, or modification of computer systems or programs. And design, documentation, testing, creation, or modification of computer programs related to machine operating systems. And the fourth, of course, is a combination of the aforementioned duties. So the executive exemption involves four tests. Of course, the salary exemption is included here as well. The primary duty of the job must be managing the enterprise, department, or subdivision of the enterprise. It must be customarily and regularly direct work of at least two or more full-time employees. They must have the authority to hire or fire other employees, or at least have the recommendations carry significant weight in those decision-making. While the title is executive, you have to keep in mind that these laws apply to a wide range of organizational sizes. Therefore, a manager in a company may actually claim exemption with the executive test. The professional test is one of the more interesting tests. It has two major components. So you've got the learned professional exemption and the creative professional exemption. Both exemptions have the $684 minimum earnings per week. From there, they diverge on the qualifications. To qualify for the learned professional exemption, the employee's primary duty must be the performance of work requiring advanced knowledge, which is defined as work that is predominantly intellectual in character and requires the consistent exercise of discretion and judgment. Now the advanced knowledge 
must be in a field of science or learning and must be customarily acquired by a prolonged course of specialized intellectual instruction. It's a mouthful. For the creative professional exemption, the employee's primary duty must be the performance of work requiring invention, imagination, originality, or talent in a recognized field of artistic or creative endeavor. The Department of Labor specifically calls out teachers as a job that is exempt from overtime. Another test is the administrative exemption. Now, it also has a $684 per week minimum. For the administrative test, though, the employee's primary duty must be the performance of office or non-manual work directly related to the management or general business operations. This includes the exercise of discretion and independent judgment with respect to matters of significance. Now for the outside sales exemption, it is the one exemption where the minimum salary requirements do not apply. For outside sales, the employee's primary duty must be to make sales or obtained orders or contracts for services or for the use of facilities for which a consideration will be paid by the client or customer and they must also be engaged away from the employer's place of business. This test has often been challenged when companies attempt to apply it for sales done predominantly inside their facilities. Therefore, an employer using it needs to be absolutely clear of the justification when using this test. So when an employer wants to identify a job as not being eligible for overtime pay, they must justify their case by comparing the job's primary duties against one of the listed tests, computer, executive, professional, administrative, or outside sales. If you've worked a job that was identified as exempt, where you are not eligible for overtime, but you thought you probably should be, I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. I don't need to know the details, but I'm curious as to what the most common questionably evaluated jobs are. In a few days, I'll be releasing a video walking through how an employer can design a tool to help its HR team make recommendations on exemption status. If you're part of an HR compensation or a small business leader team, you won't want to miss it. Hey, as I evolve my video skills, I'll continue to enhance the videos for topics important to the success of HR and those that care about it. I hope you join me on this journey to build a channel that's mission is to provide insight on how to explain critical concepts and improve HR processes. Subscribe to the channel and you'll be able to see future videos. As you find these videos helpful, don't forget to click the like button. And until next time, take care.